So you've done your Ancestry DNA test. Now we're going to look at the information that you can derive by starting and going through your Ancestry tree in just a moment. Hi, I'm John Myers, and on History Repeated, we upload videos on history that you'll want to tell other people about. That's the best way for history to be repeated. After you've done your Ancestry DNA test and learned something about your ancestors, it would be a good idea to start an Ancestry.com family tree if you haven't already, because you'll be surprised at the kind of information that you can learn through starting a family tree. And the best way for me to show you that is through an example. So we're going to go through a family tree and I'll show you some of the information that you can find. And also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. We upload videos weekly and we're bound to have something of interest to you shortly. So let's go through an ancestry tree and see what kind of information we can find. We're looking now at a portion of my ancestry tree and I'm going to focus on one person, Valentine Whiteman, as you can see 1681 to 1747. So we're back a ways in my tree. One of the tools that Ancestry.com provides are these leaves, which means that there are hints that will give you more information about this person. Notice how many children this man had. He had two wives, and with a first wife, Susanna Holmes, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven children, and then two more with his second wife, at least two more. I haven't expanded my tree with the second wife because my lineage is through the first wife, in fact, the second child, Mary Whiteman, who married Joshua Rathbun, and my tree then extends through the Rathbun line. But notice all of these hints associated with all of these people in my tree. And that gives you a lot more information than you can find anywhere else, even if you go through census records and things like that. So I'm going to zoom back in now, and we'll look at Valentine Whiteman's biography and his hints. All right, and it says here that there are 21 ancestry hints. In fact, there are a few more, but I've already looked at some of them. And these hints consist of other people's trees that include the same ancestor that I have, ancestry member trees. They include records such as North American family histories and various other records. Now notice this North American family histories 1500 to 2000 are stories and memories. You're going to find a lot of information there that's not available anywhere else because these are collections of stories or people's write-ups that they add to their own family trees. And because we share common ancestors, we can look at other people's information. So I'm going to look at this for a moment. And I'm going to view this story. All right, and it says here that we have notes found in the family Bible of George Whiteman, one of Valentine Whiteman's sons. So this information was taken right from the family Bible and recorded and passed down, and I have access to it. And I'll just read a little bit of it. George Whiteman in 1715 was 83 years old, born in 1632, uh, the 4th of November. So here we have confirmation of things you might find in other records right from the family Bible. So it's a good second source of information. And the fact that we have instant access to somebody's family Bible is quite fascinating. And it also gives quite a bit more about his family information, his children, and when they were born. So you can verify a lot of information that you found through other sources. Now I'm going to go back out to the Valentine Whiteman screen and look at some of the other ancestor member trees. This is other people who have included Valentine Whiteman in their family trees because they're descendants of the same person that I am. Valentine Whiteman is my seventh great-grandfather, which I believe makes him one of 514 or so other seventh great-grandfathers and grandmothers that I have. So let's look at some of the other tree information. So on the right is the information that I have in my Myers family tree. And then on the left are other people's trees with the same person in their trees. If any of the information is different, it'll let me know and see if I want to add that information into my tree. The owner of this tree's name is Bowden. And here's another one owned by the Trace family. And another one by the Crowley family and many more. I'm going to go back up here because I want to show you something. See how it says there are nine sources, eight records, nine photos, and six stories in this other person's tree? Well, if I don't have all of that information in my tree, I can grab that from their tree and put it in mine. 
So let's look at some of the stories that this person has collected. And the stories would be under this tab called Gallery. All right, and there's some of the photos that they have. But I'm going to click on this story about Reverend Valentine Whiteman. And as we read down through this, again, this seems to be a collection of information that this person has found and posted. There's something very interesting here I want to point out. I'm just going to read to you a short paragraph. In early 1703, 21-year-old Valentine married Susanna Holmes, so that would be my seventh great-grandmother, of Newport, the granddaughter of Rhode Island's famous Baptist clergyman, Reverend Obadiah Holmes, and the great-granddaughter of Providence founder, Roger Williams. All right, I'm going to stop there. I don't know if you're familiar with Roger Williams, but he's the founder of Providence, Rhode Island and one of the major characters in the founding of Rhode Island. There are many books written about him. So it turns out, according to this, he's my 10th great-grandfather. So I've just discovered another ancestor by reading this story posted on somebody else's tree about somebody that I already knew about, Valentine Whiteman. So having found this information, I can add these people to my tree. And I'm going to take you back now to my tree. According to the story, these new ancestors were relatives of Susanna Holmes, not Valentine Whiteman. I already have the Whiteman parents in my tree. So by clicking on this icon, I can switch over and follow Susanna Holmes' ancestry. Let's locate Susanna Holmes now in this newly expanded tree. And I'm going to drag the screen. So here we have Susanna Holmes and Valentine Whiteman, my seventh great-grandparents, and notice in my tree, which I've already added, there's Roger Williams and his wife, and they're my 10th great-grandparents, and he was the founder of Providence, Rhode Island. And I found out that information because I read the letter in a story that another member had attached to their ancestor. And notice all the hints associated with all these people in my tree. So I'm going to click on Roger Williams because he has hints associated with his name. And if we look at the number of ancestry member trees associated with Roger Williams, we'll find 10 other public ancestry trees. And that's what happens. The farther back up you go, the more people are descendants of this person, and the more people potentially who have done research already and attached more stories and more photos along with their ancestor. And there are 39 new hints that I have yet to discover, but I'm going to go into my gallery. Notice that we're now in the Myers family tree, which is my tree. And this is information that I've already collected on Roger Williams. Pictures and stories and facts about my 10th great-grandfather. And there are, in fact, other books already written about him. So this was just an example of the information that can be found in Ancestry.com along with their tools that they have that are unique to Ancestry.com. There's no other place where you can find these unique stories and pictures except to build your own family tree and then to start going step by step up through the tree and see what other people have attached to these people because they're also descended from the same people you are. So I hope that encourages you to start your family tree. Follow my links to see how to start a tree and the basics of getting started and you'll find that your tree will grow rapidly with the tools available through Ancestry.com. Hit the like button and remember to subscribe to this channel.